Today I'm going to show you guys how to make a custom brush, use it with a clone stamp tool, and stylize an image. Hey guys, my name is Aaron Nace. You can find Flurn on Twitter at Flurn. We're going to do something really cool today. I'm going to show you how to make a custom brush completely from scratch that mimics dirt, and then we're going to use that in combination with a clone stamp tool to clone stamp dirt in a realistic way that's going to look really, really good. Let's get into it because we got a ton to learn. This is our image by Robert and uh, just a really, really cool image. The one thing that I kind of thought we could do is fill in um, this area around here to kind of make it look like it's a, a seamless level of ground so it doesn't necessarily look like there's, um, you know, that like indent there. Now, a lot of times when you can do something like this is grab a clone stamp tool. I'm going to show you what like a regular clone stamp tool would look like. If I just grab here and start to sample away um, and then I paint in there. Let's just zoom in so we can see what we're doing here. Can you see how like the edge of it's just, it shows up as a little bit fuzzy. There's going to be like a bit of a fudge, fuzzy edge and between like one area of clone stamp and another area of clone stamp, you wind up usually getting something that just kind of looks like not really that natural. You usually get something that's just a little bit more like it has that like fuzzy edge. So what we're going to actually do is we're going to build something that looks a lot like dirt and then use that to make sure that there is no such thing as that fuzzy edge there. So really, really cool. Here's how to do it. We're going to make a new document by hitting Command N. That's our new document. And let's make it 500 pixels by 500 pixels. And we're going to hit OK. Now, there are a lot of brush tools here in Photoshop. If you just right click, you can see all these cool brushes. You could even go to Load Brushes. Or let's just go to our Natural Brushes. Let's click over here on Natural Brushes. Um, and I'll hit append here and this will just add to these. So we have all these like cool like splatter brushes and things like this. There we go. And I'll just paint on here something that looks like that. Kind of nice. I just recommend having some fun with these. Like make some of these larger and some of these smaller. There we go. This is just going to show up a little bit different from the, from the normal brushes that, you know, are just the regular shape in Photoshop. All right, what does this look like? A little like splatter. Maybe we'll make that even bigger and then have some like splatters and stuff like that. So I'm just making something that looks completely random if you haven't uh, been able to tell that so far. Um, there's no real rhyme or reason to what I'm doing. I'm just kind of like making some random shapes and things like that. All right, and I'm painting with black. Um, black on white and that's what's going to make basically like a custom brush shape. So just something like this that looks totally completely random. Um, that's, that's pretty good actually. I, I don't really need anything much more than that. All right, so what we're going to do now that we have this um, jumbled mess here, uh, what we're going to do is go to edit and define brush preset. Now we're just going to call this dirt. Think of this as like one little clod of dirt. So we're going to hit OK and now that's called dirt and then I can paint around with this paintbrush which is cool. So let's go ahead and switch back to our original image. Here we go. And now I need to get this dirt brush looking more like dirt. You can see I'm going to make a new layer here and I'm going to paint with, let's paint with like a bright red. There we go. Something like that. Okay. So we can see, let's just make the brush a little smaller. This is what it looks like now. Still not incredibly dirt like. So what we're going to do is go in here, our brush settings, and we're going to change a few things. All right. There we go. Let's go to window and then down here to brush. And then now what I'm going to do is actually build some shape dynamics in there. So I'm going to click on this shape dynamics right there and I'm going to load our size jitter all the way up just like that. We're going to take the minimum diameter down and the angle jitter up as well. And that's just going to help us like have a little bit more of a, uh, it's going to randomize the pattern quite a bit. Our brush tip shape here, I'm just going to take our spacing and we're going to bring that up a little bit. There we go. So it looks like something like that. So now we're seeing kind of like individual clumps of dirt. That looks even better. And then let's go ahead and turn on our scattering. There we go. We'll turn on scattering. And I'm going to make my brush really small here. All right. Even smaller. And this is going to be like individual little bits of dirt. Maybe I won't scatter them so far. OK. Very cool. So even if you zoom way in, these things all have like edges that are not soft edges. So that's, that's kind of the whole point is even if you zoom way in, they still have definition around their edges. It just, it kind of looks like little clumps of dirt. And that's basically the whole idea is to create little clumps of dirt and, um, and then use that as a clone stamp. So now that we've created this brush and it looks about like how we want it to, we're going to delete this layer in a second. I'm just doing this to see, 
does it actually look like what we want. We're going to go ahead and save the brush. So to do so, let's go click right here uh, to your options menu and uh, go to new brush preset. And we'll just call this um, dirt clots. There we go. So that looks pretty good. So now let's go ahead and delete that layer. I want to create a new layer. And if I want to grab this brush, all you have to do is you can go to your brush tool, right click, and it should be the very last one in your thumbnail here. If I click over there, you'll see it says dirt clots. Now you can also use the clone stamp tool. So if I use the clone stamp tool and right click with that, I can choose the dirt clots with this as well, which is really cool. So just to show you guys how this works, I'm on a new layer here. With the clone stamp tool, I'm making sure to collect select current and below. That's going to select this layer and anything that's below it too. And I can sample an area here and then just kind of paint around and you can see it's going to just paint in dirt clots, which is actually really fun. You can do a heck of a lot of really cool, um, really cool techniques by just using this exact same. You can do a lot of cool images. You can see like if you wanted to make a person look like they're kind of being formed from nothing, you could do that with this same exact technique. But instead, what we're going to do is uh, sample some of the dirt. So I'm going to sample this area. Uh, with the clone stamp tool, just hold Alt or Option and sample an area. So I'm going to sample like right there and basically just paint right over top of these transitions area, transition areas. There we go. That's looking pretty good. So you can see every like little bit of paint that I put on it shows up like as dirt clots. So it, you don't have that fuzzied edge. It, it's all just like, it actually looks like little bits of dirt, um, little clumps of dirt, which is exactly what we want. Uh, it just helps kind of like everything blend together. There we go. And sample from a couple different areas. It's just going to give you a lot more of a natural looking feel to anything that you're clone stamping. Um, because instead of it, you know, just having the like soft round edge, it actually looks like, you know, dirt or whatever it is, is, uh, is interacting. All right, with the environment itself. It's just kind of fun to do too. All right, making brushes that look like dirt. Custom brushes are the best. You can do quite a bit with the custom brushes. And uh, this is just one of the wonderful things you can do. There we are. Great. So let's just turn that layer off and on. And you can see really, really nice there. And um, it, doesn't, it doesn't look like we used a brush. It just looks like it already looked like that. So that's kind of the idea that I wanted to do. Let's kind of close that in a little bit. All right. Everything else looks really good. What we're going to do is just stylize this image just a little bit more. I'm going to grab a curves adjustment layer. We're going to bring it down here in the middle. We're going to just bring that brightness way down. Then I'm going to add some red. We're going to pull this up a little bit. And then I'm going to take my blue channel and pull that down a little bit. And this is just going to kind of warm it up Give it that nice orange color. Uh, it might be a bit too saturated, so I'm going to take my hue saturation, just kind of like lower it down just a little bit. But you can see this is still an important layer here. And that just kind of like gives you that nice like earth dirt feel um, to everything. Everything's better with a nice earth dirt feel, don't you agree? Um, and then here at the end, just to give it a little bit more of uh, just a little bit of color, uh, I'm going to grab my blue channel here in my uh, in the levels adjustment layer. We're going to grab our output levels and I'm going to pull in some blue from the bottom and then some yellow into the top. There we go. And that's just going to give it a little bit of tone, a little bit of cooling, and um, maybe we'll just add like a tiny bit of red as well. All right. And warm it up just a bit. There we go. So just a little bit of toning, especially there on his skin, kind of warms that up as well. And just it takes away that like coolness of it and uh, really makes it seem a lot more earthy. So. There we go, that's it. And you can see that it really didn't take too long. So let's just click all those. I'm going to hit Command G to group them together. And we'll show you guys the before and the after. Let's just zoom in so you can see that before and the after. And really, that took almost no time. And uh, it's pretty fun to play around the Clone Stamps tool. So that's it. Guys, if you're doing anything similar using the Clone Stamp tool, making textures and patterns and things like that, please leave them in a comment right down below. I'd love to see your images. Thanks so much for watching, Florin. It means a lot to have you as a part of the family. We'll talk to you soon. Bye guys. Hey guys and welcome to Flirn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can call me on Twitter. No, you can't call me anywhere, actually. Just call me maybe. That's all. Carly Ray Jepsen here. Just call me maybe. <laughs> Hi guys, Kat from Flirn here. For more information on our episode, please check out our website at www.flirn.com. Also check out our latest photo shoots, which include turning a woman into a chocolate bar, making an epic burger, 
and lighting a hand on fire. If you want a free tutorial, please sign up for our newsletter because it's a free tutorial. It's awesome.